We now begin in part two to examine some of the specific tactics of the disinformation campaign uh, through an ethical lens. This campaign has been very successful in convincing large segments of U.S. society that the science, scientific basis for human-induced warming is without merit. Here we see a U.S. Senator, Senator James Inhofe, claiming that the entire science of climate change is a hoax. At the science of global warming back in 2000, the proponents of man-made catastrophic uh, global warming are being motivated by money. The concept that man-made gases are causing catastrophic global warming may well be the greatest hoax ever perpetrated on the American people. In this series, we will distinguish between scientific skepticism and disinformation. Scientific skepticism is the oxygen and catalyst of science. It is good. It should be encouraged. Disinformation, as we will see, is deeply ethically abhorrent and problematic. We saw in the first video in this series that the scientific basis uh, for climate change grew and built upon itself, confirmed itself, and got strengthened uh, starting in the late 1970s up to the present. There's something called the consensus view. The consensus view is not a consensus on all things. It is a consensus that the planet is clearly warming. The warming is mostly human caused. And if steep reductions are not made, the planet will experience really harsh impacts and the poor people will particularly experience these impacts. The consensus view is supported by every academy of science in the world that has taken a position on the issue. This slide identifies 19 of them uh, that have said the consensus view is entitled to respect. The consensus view is also supported by over 100 uh, organizations uh, that have relevant scientific expertise, including those listed in this slide, and also by 97 to 98 percent of all scientists that actually do peer-reviewed climate research compared to other scientists, uh, according to two prestigious scientific journals. The consensus view is also supported by the United States Academy of Sciences, which has issued at least five reports uh, summarizing and supporting the consensus view on climate change the last of which was in May of 2011. The scientific consensus position is not only supported by the U.S. Academy of Sciences, it also issued a report on what are called climate surprises, rapid nonlinear responses to the climate system. This chart shows that uh, this rapid nonlinear uh, responses of the system actually existed over the last 100,000 years. We may be pushing the world to really unstable climate uh, in the years ahead. Uh, starting in the early 1980s, a climate change disinformation campaign uh, had gathered its strength. There are now six or seven books uh, that, that look at this campaign and describes how it works, uh, how it's been organized, and its tactics. There's also been a growing uh, peer-reviewed sociological literature on this disinformation campaign. This literature describes what the disinformation campaign is, how it's been funded, how it's operated. It's great. These are some more papers in that vast, growing sociological peer-reviewed literature about the disinformation campaign and how it's operated. This uh, is a depiction of how the disinformation campaign has been funded and organized, uh, prepared by two sociologists, Dunlap and McCright. Across the top are the funders of the disinformation campaign, uh, fossil fuel industry, uh, other corporations, and right-wing philanthropic organizations. They fund organizations, including in lower boxes, think tanks, and front groups, and astroturf groups. Uh, they all talk to each other over the internet and create an echo chamber uh, among themselves uh, on developing issues. The sociological uh, literature on the disinformation campaign describes the disinformation campaign as a type of counter-movement. 
A counter movement is understood to be a movement that forms in response to another social movement. The disinformation campaign is part of a counter movement that grew uh, in response to the environmental movement of the 1960s and late 1970s. No one is actually in charge. However, there is huge communication through the internet uh, about issues in, of interest to the disinformation campaign. The participants in the disinformation campaign described by the sociological literature include different kinds of organizations, think tanks, front groups, astroturf groups, PR firms, and some scientists. They all communicate with each other over the internet. We will now look in some detail at the tactics of the disinformation campaign uh, that is described in the sociological literature and the books referenced uh, before. Uh, these tactics include that reckless disregard for the truth, focusing on unknowns while ignoring what is known, something often referred to as cherry picking, making specious claims of bad science, uh, the creation of uh, front groups, uh, the manufacturing bogus science in fake scientific conferences and non-peer-reviewed journals, uh, the centrality in all of this of think tanks and how they operate, uh, misleading public relations campaigns, the creation of something called astroturf groups, and most troubling of all, cyberbullying of scientists and journalists. We will look at these tactics to distinguish them from uh, responsible skepticism, which is a good thing. Uh, skepticism should be encouraged. Uh, these tactics, it will become quite clear, are deeply ethically problematic and abhorrent, particularly given what's at stake with climate change, uh, particularly in light of the huge threat to human health and ecological systems on which life depends that are threatened by climate change. Uh, we want to distinguish skepticism from disinformation. The first tactic we will now look at is characterized as reckless disregard for the truth or perhaps even outright, outright lying. Uh, many participants in the disinformation campaign are claiming that the entire basis for climate science is a hoax. How could it be a hoax? Every academy of science in the world supports the consensus view. Hundreds of organizations with relevant scientific expertise Almost all the researchers that actually do peer-reviewed science support the consensus view. The claim that is a hoax is not responsible skepticism, but disinformation. Another claim frequently made by participants in the disinformation campaign is that there is no evidence of human causation, that it's still a very subtle question. While in fact, there are many robust lines of evidence, independent lines of evidence, that the undeniable warming that we're seeing is human caused. This chart depicts what are called fingerprints of human causation, which are well discussed in the literature. Uh, one fingerprint, for instance, would be that if human or humans are causing uh, the warming, then the upper atmosphere cools as lower atmosphere warms. That's in fact what we're seeing. There are many other independent fingerprints of human causation. Uh, uh, claiming that uh, there is no evidence of human causation is either a lie or a reckless disregard for the truth. One common uh, tactic seen in the disinformation literature is called cherry picking the evidence. Cherry picking the evidence is to focus in on what something which is actually unknown uh, and claiming that the unknown uh, undermines a vast body of scientific literature which is well settled. One example of this is clouds. Uh, the scientific community is not actually clear whether high clouds or low clouds will be formed in a warming world. This may affect uh, final temperatures, but this unknown doesn't undermine a vast body of scientific literature about dangerous climate. There are several types of organizations uh, that uh, participate in the disinformation campaign. Uh, the central organization are think tanks. Think tanks have been uh, rising in numbers since the early 1980s. They've often been funded by corporations 
uh, particularly the fossil fuel industry uh, and uh, right-wing philanthropic organizations. Uh, some of these think tanks' very purpose is to undermine uh, scientific claims. Uh, they generate a huge amount of literature in terms of books and papers. Uh, the think tank's budget usually includes a substantial amount of money to then circulate the results of these books and studies uh, uh, to the, both the press and to the legislature. Uh, this is not reasonable skepticism. This is, in fact, disinformation. The literature on think tanks describes a huge rise in the number of think tanks in the United States in the last 30 years. There are well over 300 of them. Uh, the vast majority are right-wing think tanks whose very mission is to prevent government from regulating the free market. Uh, one study claimed that ExxonMobil had funded 40 think tanks on climate change alone. Some of the think tanks uh, frequently hold conferences in which they invite mostly skeptics to give their opinions. They then sometimes publish the proceedings uh, and claim that it is scientific literature. Of course, almost none of it has been subjected to peer review. It's not serious scientific literature. It's manufacturing uh, science. Uh, one think tank was known to pay uh, anyone that would write a report challenging the Intergovernment Panel on Climate Change $10,000. This is not responsible skepticism. This is the creation of disinformation. And so the first three tactics that we've now looked at, namely making claims in reckless disregard for the truth, cherry picking the science, the creation of uh, documents and reports in conferences uh, uh, held by think tanks, which are then not peer reviewed, cannot be understood as responsible, reasonable skepticism, but very dangerous disinformation. The vast majority of peer reviewed uh, literature uh, on climate change supports the consensus view. One study looked at 900 articles in peer reviewed journals. 75% of those articles supported the consensus view. The rest took no position. Zero supported the disinformation campaign's conclusions. We began this video with a short clip of a United States Senator, James Imhoff, claiming that the entire basis for climate change was a hoax, despite the fact that the United States Academy of Sciences issued four or five reports claiming otherwise. Uh, Senator Imhoff is only one among many uh, American politicians that claim that it's a hoax, the disinformation campaign has been quite successful. We've looked now at several tactics. The next video in the series will look at other tactics, and we'll start to look a little bit more deeper at the ethics of this and why uh, this is this behavior is completely unsupportable, unjustifiable, and maybe some kind of new climb against humanity.